I know what you've been asking yourself because I've had the same question. What do underwater structures and things look like on my Lorentz sonar? So today we're out here at an underwater dive park where we're going to do some down imaging, some side imaging, and even some active target scans of different objects under the water. So I think this should be a pretty fun video. <clears throat> So I've already been driving around, dropping a few waypoints. So now I'm going to set up sonar and down imaging just to see what some of these look, uh, objects look like as you drive over them. If you'll bear with me a second. All right, so we've set up our chart, our sonar, and our down scan. So now we're just going to cruise over and try and pass over some of these some of these waypoints that we've dropped. Here comes the first object. Can't really tell what it is. Almost looks like a boat of some kind. Or maybe a pillar with some guy wires on it. Don't know. Next we'll steer over to the left. What do we have here? Should be popping up on the screen now. This looks like some sort of bowl. Barbecue, maybe. That's a sunken boat for sure. And a big cloud of bait fish over top. And we're gonna swing wide to the left. These posts that you see are posts driven into the ground that have a rope attached so you can guide your way to each of these underwater features. Yeah, some of these things look pretty cool. All right, next we're gonna swing around and we're gonna look at side imaging. So we'll do side imaging and chart. I'm showing just the left side on my side imaging right now. I'm going to slow down a little bit, three and a half, 
can see that big ball of bait fish still. There's some signs. Could be that boat. Some other cool underwater items. Looks almost like a billboard. There's that sunken boat. I'm going to take this screenshot. Another big cloud of bait fish. Finally, let's see what these last two items are. It's pretty deep, 50 feet of water. Okay, those last two items might have been just out of range. So let's swing around again and we will see We'll see what it looks like on active target. All right, those objects should be just ahead of us now. Might slow down a little bit. We'll page over to active target. We'll drop our transducer in the water. First thing, that's our boat. That's the hull of the boat. Oh, that's pretty cool. We'll pan over a little bit further. There's another object coming into view. Not sure what those are. Now you can probably see the heading arrow pointing directly behind me. This isn't accurate. It kind of, it's kind of a fickle thing to use. Yeah, there's our boat. Panning a little bit further to the left. Oh, cloud of bait fish. A lot of bait in this lake. Looks like some sort of sign, signpost. Switch back, we're gonna add a, add a view. We're gonna go chart, we're gonna go active target. And then we're gonna adjust the, we'll save that. Then we'll go into this page where we adjust the split. Right here, we're gonna go way over like that. Save. Good. So now we can see where we are. Signpost. This is straight ahead into shore. Let's turn a little bit to the left. Our boats come back into view. There's that boat again. 
gets a little bit fuzzy as you get into that stitching, beam stitching area. That's pretty cool. All right, here's another object. Let's see if we can get a good look at it. So I'm kind of panning left and right just to see, see if I can get a better view of it. Right now we're staring at our object, which is right on my, my right, right side. Yeah, right side. Coming up here, straight ahead of us, is the swim platform. So let's get in a little closer. And that on the chart is the um, waypoint straight ahead. So again, pan left and right a little bit, just to get a better view of the object we're looking at. When fishing, boat control is so critical. Oh look, you can see a fish swimming underneath the platform. That's cool. So now we see the platform right underneath us. Let's back up a little bit. Boat control is so critical. And with something like this, it's so easy. Something like this being a pedal drive kayak. Let's see if we can catch that fish while we're here. You can see my lure dropping down. You can see the lure and the swivel right above it. Yeah, kind of over top. One of the best parts for me about live sonar is that I don't have to go over the fish anymore to know that they're there. I can stay, you know, 20, 30 feet back, cast to them. If that's not power, I don't know what is. There's one there. Just give them a quick pitch out. Let it sink to the bottom. Start my retrieve. Kind of missed him there. Now you get real time feedback about how quickly you're retrieving your bait and how quickly it sinks. Like this is an eight pounds bait, so it doesn't sink very quickly. But unless you have sonar and, and feedback, you don't know for sure. Like there's a fish 20 feet out and he's keeping his distance. So cool. Anyway, I'm gonna play with this thing all day because it's awesome.
See, now I got a fish chasing. Gonna dangle it in his face a minute. See if he's still interested. No, he swam away. See, that's what we know. Now we know. Whereas before, I would guess, or I would just be straight retrieving. <laughs> you can watch them chase my jig. Curious little buggers. Must be perch. chasing. Got him. Oh, I missed. <laughs> I wouldn't have been prepared for that strike had I not seen him on the sonar. See, now I can pedal backwards a little bit. I'm getting a little too close. I like to maintain, you know, 20, 30 feet from the shore. Wow. See, I had no idea. Probably up until now, I was retrieving too high, too quickly, cranking this line too fast. And now I have that instant feedback. Pretty amazing. All right. All right, that's it for this round. Thanks a lot for joining me. We'll see you on the next one.